Coroutines are a feature of Kotlin that simplify asynchronous operations on Android. A new suspend modifier was introduced in the language and it is used for functions that need to be run inside a coroutine. In this video, I will tell you more about why coroutines are important and how they work under the hood. This will help you better understand why a suspend function won't return until all the work that it started has completed, and also how a coroutine can suspend without blocking threads. If you learn something new, like the video and subscribe, but only if you think we've earned it. Use coroutines to manage asynchronous tasks that might otherwise block the main thread and cause your app to freeze. Coroutines are also helpful to replace callback-based APIs with imperative-looking code. Let's see an example of asynchronous code that uses callbacks. Here, we have the function loginuser that after making a network request to get user information from the internet, it saves the result to the local database and returns the result of that call. All of that using callbacks. The result of the computation is returned using the user result callback that is passed in as a parameter of the function. Code that heavily uses callbacks can become hard to read and understand. Kotlin coroutines let you convert callback-based code to sequential code. Code written sequentially is typically easier to read, and unlike callbacks, coroutines provide an easy way to swap between threads and handle exceptions. See the same function written with coroutines. We added the suspend modifier to the function, and now it returns user instead of having that callback we used to pass in as a parameter. As you can see from the wiggly icon in the gutter, the other functions called from the suspend function body are also suspend functions. The suspend modifier tells the compiler that this function needs to be executed inside a coroutine. As a developer, you can think of a suspend function as a regular function whose execution might be suspended and resumed at some point. If you are new to coroutines on Android and want to learn more about them, I would recommend going through the coroutines code labs first. But what's the compiler actually doing under the hood when we mark the function as suspend? Under the hood, the Kotlin compiler takes suspend functions and converts them to an optimized version of callbacks using a finite state machine. So yes, you are right. The Kotlin compiler will write those callbacks for you. The way suspend functions communicate with each other is with continuation objects. A continuation is just a generic callback interface with some extra information. Context will be the coroutine context to be used in that continuation. Resume with resumes execution of the coroutine with a result that can contain either a value, which is the result of the computation that caused the suspension, or an exception. With Kotlin 1.3, you also have convenient extension functions called resume and resume with exception that are specialized versions of the resume with function. Back to our suspend function. How is the compiler going to modify it? It will replace the suspend modifier with an extra parameter called completion of type continuation in the function signature. That will be used to communicate the result of the suspend function computation to the coroutine that called it, as you can see in the code. Also, the return type of the transformed function is unit instead of user. The user object will be returned in the added continuation parameter. Timeout. As a disclaimer, the code we are showing will not fully match the bytecode generated by the compiler. It will be Kotlin code accurate enough to allow you to understand what's really happening internally. This representation is generated by Coroutine's version 1.3 and might change in future versions of the library. Back to the code again. The Kotlin compiler will identify when the function can suspend internally. Every suspension point will be represented as a state in the finite state machine. And these states are represented with labels by the compiler. 
for a better representation of the state machine, the compiler will use a WEN statement to implement the different states. Notice that this code is incomplete since the different states have no way to share information. How is that problem solved? The compiler will use the continuation parameter to do it. This is why the generic of the continuation is nullable any instead of the return type of the original function, that was user. The compiler will create a private class that first holds the required data and second calls the login user function recursively to resume the execution of the function that was suspended. Let's see what that class looks like. Let's call that generated class login user state machine. It is a private class that extends from caroutine impulse, which is a subtype of continuation. In the constructor, it takes this continuation object named completion that will be used to communicate back the result of this function to the function that called it. This is the same continuation that we called before in the last state of the state machine. But also, this class saves the variables that were declared in the original suspend function. And there are other variables that are common for all coroutine impulse. The result variable is the result from the previous continuation, and label keeps the state of the state machine. Also, it overrides the invoke suspend function that is used to resume the state machine. It will call the login user function to trigger the state machine again. It calls it with just information of the continuation object. The rest of parameters in the login user function signature become nullable. At that point, label will be already in the next state of to execute, and the result of the previous state's continuation will be assigned. An instance of this class is added to login user. The first thing it needs to do is knowing if it is the first time the function is called or if the function has resumed from a previous state. It does it by checking if the continuation passed in is of type login user state machine or not. If it's the first time, it will create a new login user state machine instance and will store the completion instance received as a parameter. If it's not, it will just carry on executing the state machine. For completion, this is what the rest of the function looks like. You can see how the rest of the code uses the continuation variable to get the result of the last state of the state machine. But also, for every state, it checks if an error happened while this function was suspended. In the last state, it calls resume on the continuation of the function that called this one. And that's it! As you can see, the Kotlin compiler does a lot under the hood. Because of the implementation of the generated state machine, a suspend function won't return until all the work that it started has completed. How can the code suspend without blocking the thread? Well, everything needed to resume the execution of a suspended function is in the continuation object that is passed around, so it can be resumed at any point. That's all we had to say about suspend for now. Thanks for watching and go write better Android apps with Kotlin. Yeah.